Hey everybody, welcome to American Idol on Aired. I'm your host, Bennett Shear, and today we have got another Aired exception for you. This is a contestant that you did see on season 20 of American Idol. Please welcome Thomas Moran. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Going great. How are you? It's going great. Ha happy to be here. <laughs> I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to see you again, because as I said, we did get to see you on American Idol. So it's always a treat to get to revisit some of those people that we did get to see. But of course, there's right. always more to the story. So that's why it's fun to do these episodes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's true. I've, I've really enjoyed some of the past episodes. So I was happy when you reached out. Well, thank you. Uh, I mean, just give us some of your story, man, because like everybody starts somewhere, aired, unaired, Um Mm -hmm. just music i mean before american idol came into the picture how old were you when you started singing why did you fall in love with it mm. uh that's a good question i mean it's funny it's funny as someone who doesn't really do too too much music in their day-to-day -day life um i mean how do i answer that i guess the the story i guess would begin with my mom really my mom has always been really musically talented she did irish step as you saw on the show and was a really really talented irish step dancer competed in at like the highest level of Irish step dance. And so um, it was funny. So I, I come from a really Catholic family. And so growing up, we weren't, uh, my parents were pretty, pretty reserved with the types of music that we were allowed to listen to. So um, I was like raised on Motown and like, I was raised on music from like the 60s, 70s and 80s. So those, that was like the only music I ever remember listening to as a kid, at least around the house. And so um, some of those, uh, just that, that rhythm and blues, that, that kind of, or old rock and roll, that was the music that I was kind of raised on. And I, I don't remember when I first started singing. I just, I just really liked singing along and I knew all the lyrics because like I said, it was the only thing that was ever like played around the house. Um, and then I, I guess in, in high school, I joined choir and I did a little bit of musical theater and things like that. And um, I have a few friends who are also also enjoy singing. So we, you know, we just sing together, but I don't really do it formally anymore. But I guess between my family life being, you know, like influenced by a lot of older types of music and then uh, musical theater, that's kind of the origin story of how my music appreciation began, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm curious, once you maybe start listening to more of the modern music and maybe start getting more into hearing stuff that's on the radio or just kind of mm -hmm. more contemporary, how that kind of shifts your perspective of maybe who you want to be as an artist, because you may have heard mm -hmm. only certain types of music, whether it be just that it's older or that this is what you're restricted to. But now you sort of realize, okay, well, do I want to fit into this? Do I want to be mm -hmm. a pop star, be on the radio? Or do I like right. theater? What, where do I fit in, you know? Right. Totally. Yeah. I think there are definitely plenty of modern artists that I really, really enjoy. I just think like for me, that nostalgia and the music that I think I appreciate the most is definitely born from some of those older eras of music. But there are several artists out here now doing like that are kind of deriving inspiration from some of those older sounds that I absolutely love. Like I am so into Silk Sonic and everything Anderson Peck and uh, Bruno Mars are doing right now. I mean, I love Silk Sonic. I love their whole vibe. I think it's so fun. So I really I really enjoy when modern artists kind of call back to those kind of golden days of, of R&B and, you know, pop music from the 60s and 70s. It really is amazing. I mean, I, I love Silk Sonic too. And I think when I heard Leave the Door Open for the first time, I realized yeah. this can kind of be modern at the same time. I mean, we don't have to just say, oh, this is a throwback because when you bring something into the 21st century and you right. you, you know you want to build a whole brand off of it, you don't have to just say, oh, we're going to be considering ourselves a throwback act. It can be like, right. no, like this, we're allowed to be this way in 2022 and beyond. And I think we're seeing more and more about how you know, you turn on the radio or you go on TikTok and there's these artists that are coming up with songs that are new and fresh and yet derive influences from artists that go into, you know, the 20th century. You know, you just you never you never know where people are going to find inspiration today, which is why it's so important for, I think, current artists to listen to things from the past and really have their musical history down because you never know where it could take you and what it, what you could be inspired by. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a, that's objectively true. Like music is alive and it's ever changing, ever self influencing. So um, yeah, I, I think you put that beautifully. That's de definitely true. Thank you. I mean, I also think with just like where pop music has gone, even the last year or two, you look at like synth pop and kind of the '80s mm -hmm. vibes you see with Dua Lipa, right. The Weekend. I mean, it came from somewhere. Right, right. That, I, yeah, the weekend especially. I think when I first heard that kind of being reintroduced, I was like, hell yes, why did we ever leave it behind? 
and the reality is it's like every every era of music will have its have its ups and downs and yeah i mean it'll come in and out of style but like i mean i still like i will i will listen to a super synthy pop song any day of the week you know what yes. I, mean? I, I love it so yeah that's totally I don't know, like take my breath. That kind of feel. I feel like I'm listening to like an a, an old video game from an era that I probably wouldn't even know. But it's like the the right. beat of it and how fast it is and totally. yeah. And and also, yeah. what was that uh, that tr- that newer choice of on song? Uh, it like sounds a lot like Take My Breath Away. What was that song that he came out with it like like last year? Oh shoot, I can't remember. Um, oh, do you know what I'm talking about? I know. I remember a song you put out last year. I just wish I could remember the title. Let me, I, I have to look it up. That's going to kill me. It yes. was, but it was really similar and really, really good. It was um, Angel Baby. Mm. That single, I guess, yeah, it was last year. That song is so good. And it totally feels like it, it's a callback to Take My Breath Away. I really like that song. Um, but yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no, no. But also just the fact that you can have a song that is literally released in the 80s, like running up that hill right. get put into stranger <laughs> things and now 10 year old kids know the song i mean right how crazy is that right or I've, I've really appreciated what elton john has been doing like with all these remixes and like bringing yeah. old, old classics back to life i think it's genius first of all because they were chart toppers back in the day they'll be chart toppers again um especially when you throw someone like you know whoever if he, but didn't he do one with like britney spears and dua lipa now it's like yeah using all of these like you know a-list set celebs it's awesome you know and like this is the year of the sample, I think, because between Nicki right. Minaj and Super Freaky Girl right. to Young Gravy get money, like, and you're yeah, like, what yeah. is happening? It's it's, it's <laughs> insane. Right, right. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, being on set at Idol, you're around musicians from all over the country. In some cases, Canada, and you know, just coming from different places but also having different influences and playing different styles of music and Mm -hmm. whether they're confined to a certain genre or not really having any particular sound like it must have been interesting to surround yourself with musicians in person to sort of get that experience oh yeah that was i think one of my one of the greatest joys of the entire experience for me was just getting to spend time around these people who are so invested in this art first of all invested second of all immensely talented people yeah i mean i i uh the whole time I was there, I, I was struggling with like imposter syndrome. So I was like, these people are off the charts. Like, I don't know how they're not famous already. And you know what I mean? And um, it was, it was such a joy to just be around all of these creative people who are united in this, in this one thing, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. hundred percent. But like you said, I think uh, some people were coming with like that more established artistic background of like, they knew already who they were, who they wanted to be as artists and then there were a lot of way more green people. I think I was probably the most green person there, but I really did. You know what I mean? I don't really um, know what I would do in theory if I were to really, really expand as an artist. But um, it was so inspiring just to be in that space. You know what I mean? Yeah. As yeah. a creative person, as an artist or, you know, whatever you do. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking about like, uh, like, I don't know if you met Skylar, who is a dancer, but he mm-hmm. he dabbled in singing. Are you Danielle? Oh, Clavelle. yeah, I remember Skylar. I didn't know him well, but I, I met him at Hollywood Week. He was really talented. Yeah, and he's a professional dancer, but, you know, he right. sung kind of for the first time doing Idol. And it's like you you get right. inspired by doing something that may not be in your wheelhouse. Or Danielle Clavel, who is also an actress mm-hmm. and also a salsa dancer right. and also right. an immensely talented singer. And it's just I feel like even if you're somebody who isn't doing music is like the only thing, this is all you've ever done. Cause you know, there's those stories I've sung since I was three years old. All right. I've ever wanted is a record deal. But even if you kind of are just a creative person looking for that, that new thing to inspire you, it's a great place for that. Cause you never right. know what's going to come out of it. Oh, definitely. 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 Just like a, you know, an insulated environment of talented people, you know, bouncing ideas off of each other. Like there were a bunch of the country artists when I was in uh, Austin for my original audition, they were like writing songs. I was like, first of all, my voice would be shot if I were singing this much. You know what I mean? Um, but second of all, it was just like amazing to hear them writing a really, really good song just while chilling in a room. You know what I mean? It was, it was really cool to see. Yeah. So let's talk about what got you to Austin because some contestants try out themselves. Some are approached by the show. What was your case? Okay. So here's the, here's the long and the short of it. So basically like, I think it was probably four or five years ago. I had a group of friends here in Denver when they were doing a call or an open audition or whatever uh, down at the convention center. 
and uh, they invited me to go, but I was just way too nervous. And I was just like, I just don't think I have it in me. It sounded like it was going to be a really long day of waiting in lines. Because I think thousands and thousands of people auditioned for producers in like one day. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, waiting around. But um, so I just, I, for whatever reason it was, I just decided not to do it. But auditioning for Idol, I mean, I... I, I was, uh, well, before I get off track anyway, so I, I kind of always regretted not having auditioned. And so basically, um, last summer, not the one that we just got out of, but the previous one, 2021, um, I was just sitting in my room, this really hot groggy day. And I was just like, why didn't you do that? And it like popped into my head because it was still itching in the back of my mind. It's like, that would be a fun thing to do. Um, just to give it a go, just to say that you did it. Cause I always kind of regretted that I hadn't done it that original time. Um, and so I just literally set my iPad up on this like ladder in my room and it was boiling hot and I just sang a couple of songs and I, I, I took so many takes of it because I wanted it to be perfect, obviously, um, that by the end, my voice was so shot and I was so tired of singing it that I actually kind of had a small fail at like the climax of uh, Chain of Fools by Aretha Franklin, but I just popped it into a photo or into a video editing software and like typed like fail in three, two, one. And like, and I just included it and sent it because I was just like, screw it. Like, I'm not, I'm so tired. My voice is shot and this, I just want to send it. And then, um, so I just sent it. Like, it was so funny because in the first take, my shirt was buttoned all the way up and I had an undershirt on and it was so hot that by the end, my shirt was all the way down. I was sweating and <laughs> chugging water. I'm sure I also maybe had a little, a little whiskey to help with some courage, but yeah. <laughs> um, basically I, I just sent it and then like I think it was I if I remember correctly it was pretty quick I think I heard back within a week that they were like hey that was that was great we'd love for you to audition for some of our associate producers so I was like what like that was that I could, could not believe it there was zero percent of me that thought I was gonna get um any any type of a callback and then I think a few weeks later there's this day where you um where I just like waited in this zoom waiting room to sing for more producers and I sang for them. And then, uh, you know, they, they kind of, I can't, I can't remember exactly what happened at that point. I think, I think that that was the end of it. I just, that day, maybe I talked with a producer a little bit about my story, but not really. And then I got another email a few weeks later for another Zoom audition. So mine, I guess, was three rounds before making it to the Austin audition. But in that final round, I sang for Megan, who's the executive producer of the show, and you're on the Zoom and then immediately they, they give you the decision right then and there. So she, she said, she was like, oh, we'd love for you to come down to Austin. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's just, I couldn't believe it. I, I genuinely couldn't believe it. Um, and that's when you kind of chat with the story producer and, they, and share more about yourself and, you know, why you're doing it or, you know, if you have anything important that you'd like to share. Um, and then I think just a few months later was, was Austin. So. Wow. What do you yeah. think was like, if you had to, figure out like two or three reasons why they picked you because they see a lot of different people what stood mm -hmm. out about you do you think okay I mean I think that the first thing is I'm obviously a pretty high energy individual and it, that's you know and that's something I've I've known about myself my entire life so I know I'm I think that part of it is the fact that I bring a lot of energy into a room when I step into it generally speaking um and I, I you know I I like I said while I'm not one of the most talented singers that was on that show I do I do I can make something decently nice come out of my mouth <laughs> you know what I mean like so I think it was probably a mix of the two but I think it was probably personality and then um yeah I guess I guess it has to be somewhat singing you know what I mean to make it on the show um so I guess it was those two things I don't know that that would be my guess <laughs> Well, yeah. it, it's one thing to have a huge personality. It's another thing right. to be thrown into lights and cameras. I don't know if you've had mm -hmm. experience. I mean, obviously, having done musical theater, that gives you a little bit of practice. But had you mm -hmm. ever done anything remotely like this to be on television? Oh. <laughs> Hell no. I, no, not at all. I had never done anything like that. And it was way, way more intense than I thought it was going to be. Not that I didn't think it was going to be intense, but it's an experience. Like, it is hard to describe exactly how high stimulus and um, go, go, go everything is. Um, so no, I, 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 I guess you're right. I mean, I didn't really know, um, exactly what I would, how it would be portrayed on camera, but in the end, I was totally satisfied with the way that they, <laughs> the way that it, you know, came across on television. So, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't imagine when you, you know, cause I always have to ask like what happened here, what happened right. there. And, and it almost amazes me that you guys even remember as much as you do about the auditions in particular, because it is so go, go, there's so many steps. And oh my God you know, maybe for some people, it's kind of more about remembering what actually happens when you get to the judges or for 
other people it's like well it's just it's all probably such a blur in some ways because how do you sum up like mm. days of insanely long hours and you know while all we see at home is just you stepping into a room with three right. judges you are being thrown from one corner to the next seeing this producer and that producer now you're meeting people which is frankly probably one of the more fun parts of the experience getting to know so the fun. other contestants right but i mean is there a way that you can kind of sum up like what it was like for you to have to kind of go through that whirlwind of of filming and then not filming and then singing and then more interviews like what mm -hmm. was that like for you uh, it's interesting. I feel like if you were to speak to most of the people that I encountered in Austin, I think that they would probably tell you that I came across maybe a little antisocial when I was in Austin, because I was really, really overstimulated throughout that entire experience. Like it was so, so much. And I don't even think I'm answering your question. But to sum it up, I guess I would just say like, um, it, it kind of like you described, basically what happens is you show up, we got COVID tested, and then you just go to this waiting room and you're just sitting in this waiting room for the vast majority of the time while you're there. But then they'll just ra randomly pull individuals out for B-roll and then a bigger uh, interview. Um, and then obviously the audition and then like rehearsals with the pianist and things like that. So um, it's, it is, it, it's just kind of like at the drop of a hat, things can change. And there, you would not believe how competent these producers are. Like they are like, you would not believe the systems that they have in place. Like it is wild how they, how they are managed to make sure everybody gets where they need to go constantly. And keep in mind, you're in like this huge resort. So it's not like you're stepping out of the room. You're like being trekked across the entire place all the way to this like scenic backdrop where you're going to have a long interview. And then they're going to like take you to the big idol sign, you know, like the mirror -y idol sign that people stand in front of. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like that one. And then that, like, that was if you got a golden ticket and things like that. So um, it, it, it really is just a ton of stimulus. So when I wasn't doing any of those things, I was trying to just preserve my energy because I was genuinely so tired by the end of the day. And it's a pretty early wake up time too. So yeah, it's, a, it's wild. That's why it's interesting to get more of the story because when people watch you on TV, they think you have so much energy, you must be right. the social butterfly. But really, right. you know, you're going through what everyone's going through, which is like, what am I doing? Like, there's so right. much to take in. And right. I got to wonder, like you said, I mean, you know, the crew has been doing this for so many years. Mm -hmm. It's a machine to them. But, you know, wherever venue they are, I mean, unless it's someplace that they've been filming before, I got to wonder how much time they have to just figure out where they're going to set everything up. It's like, they just are these experts. Right. You're like, all right, okay, we've got this amount of space. This goes, this goes here, this goes there. Yeah. We're going to put the cameras yeah. here, there. And it's like, right. they're going at warp speed. I think he was mentioned on one of the previous episodes, but one of the producers, his name is Patrick, and he's oh. been on the show for, yeah. I think, since episode one. Yes. So, uh, yeah, he, he obviously really knows what he's doing, but there's this there's this other producer. I think she's, like, a pretty high-level high, high level producer. I don't know the tiers of producers, but her name is Amy. I don't know if she's been mentioned, but oh, the contestant she's this, like, manager. sweet blonde lady, fiery, fiery, badass lady who just is, like, gets shit done excuse my friends but like it is like for, i i thought she was incredible like it was just she, but, but she's kind of like a no bs kind of lady because she has to be it's yeah. like she doesn't have time to be socializing and nor do you like because you gotta be over there in two minutes that sort of thing and she's just on it she's honestly a really warm person i had the pleasure of speaking with her one-on-one -on, -one on a couple of occasions and when she's not in producer mode she's like the sweetest sweetest lady but when she's in producer mode not to say she's not sweet but she's just like we got we got business you know what I yeah. mean? So, yeah, it's show awesome. business but, yeah and then all of the all of the other producers were also really really nice but everybody kind of deferred to amy's badassery when there was a crisis <laughs> at hand <laughs> yeah so, yeah so uh keeping in mind that it was hard to kind of be super social do you right. have any memories of people that you may have gotten to meet contestant wise or share memories with mm -hmm. i mean you know i know you mentioned the country thing but any mm. anything stick out as far as people um in austin specifically yeah um, so Doug, uh, Douglas was in Douglas Mills. He was in Austin with me. Uh, you mentioned Danny. She was there in Austin with me. Um, uh, Wendelie was in Austin with me. Hazi was in Austin with me. I actually have a funny memory about Hazi. It was like, this was like, I think one of the first moments where I like recognized the level of talent of everyone surrounding me. Um, 
I had to like use the restroom and Hazi was one of the first few people to audition. Then I like went up to the restroom and stepped in and I heard like the most angelic sound I had ever <laughs> heard, like the most beautiful voice. It was just Hazi strumming away on his guitar, practicing his, his audition song. And I was just like, oh my gosh, the, the people here, the level of talent here is out of control. It is out of control. But yeah, those were a few of the people that I got to encounter while I was there. Um, also, uh, Carrie... Uh, Brockwell or I think it's Brockwell or Blackwell I don't know if you've spoken with her she was a country artist she was really really talented I think she's only like 16 but sounded like you know the best country artist you've ever heard you know what I mean so it was awesome really great people and everyone's really kind too you would you I was maybe expecting there to be a slightly cutthroat energy um you know that it is a competition at the end of the day but I think the reality was that everybody kind of understood in the back of our minds was it's not us versus each other. You know, it's, it's a show. It's like the judges decide, the producers decide. So it's like everybody's just going to do their best and put their best foot forward. And the results are kind of out of our hands. So why not have like community and connect with one another and form new relationships and friendships while we're here? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that's probably the biggest thing that artists get out of the show, especially mm -hmm. now when, you know, like you said, I mean, Back in the day, let's be honest, you could be in an audition where you don't know if somebody's good or bad because they're trying to right. find the next William Hung or the next right. viral video. But in this day and age, American Idol is about finding the best of the best. So when you're right. there, you know not only that you're insanely talented, but that other people around you are. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a lot of pressure, but also you know that you have an opportunity to connect with these people, network with these people. And right. everybody has talked about how that is one of the biggest things that they've gained from being on American Idol is just mm -hmm. what they've been able to do after because they can work with artists, they can gig with artists, right. they can you right. know, make those connections. And I feel like, you know, you forget that it's even a competition. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I, I know from social media, I know there are a few people that are still like, actively in the same communities like in nashville i think um i don't know if you've spoken with jordan blue yes like, okay so jordan jordan connects with a lot of the people from idol i see it on his socials all the time and he's a he's really talented along with the people that he meets up with so um there are definitely people who are still very much actively connected in a in a physical way you know what i mean um to some of the other artists i obviously only am able to connect with people over social because i don't think anybody else is in denver but um, it's really cool to see other people still, you know, in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember which day that you finally got to audition? Oh, crud. I don't know. I, I think it, it might have been day three of the auditions. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think it was day three, though. I think it was day three. But I think I got I got moved in the lineup. I was supposed to be one of the last people to audition that day. And then they bumped me into the middle. And, you know, like when, I think um, I was talking with, uh, I don't know if it was Amy or who it was, one of the producers had emailed me or something and was like, hey, we're, we decided to put you at the end of the day because the judges are usually really tired at the end of the day and they need someone to bring some energy. Then so I was like, oh, great. Now I have even bigger, you know, an even bigger role to fill. But um, that was, uh, I ended up being in the middle of the day. Uh, and I think it was funny. It was, they did that little bit. I don't know if you remember in the Austin episode or which episode it was, but they brought a bunch of people down and had a marching band on a boat yeah. or something like that. And I was supposed to go down there, but then I ended up being like fifth audition that day. And I was like, I talked to the producers, like, listen, I just want to be totally in the zone for like hours up leading up to that. So please don't make me go stand in the burning hot Austin sun prior to auditioning. You know what I mean? So um, they were really nice and let me stay behind. So that's good. Well, how <laughs> how are you as far as like, I know that for anybody, it, you know, you had to wait for two days on top of mm -hmm. however many hours in day three, but like. The long hours probably get to everybody, but what does it feel like to just be there for basically the whole day and then some? Right. It, 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 it's honestly a lot of it is a lot of it is really fun, but a lot of it is you, you are very much in your head, at least speaking for myself. Um, I was very much in my head, especially when you're like sometimes you just happen to be in a position filming where you can see people coming in and out either beaming or looking absolutely gutted you know what I mean so yeah. that is like kind of this weird psychological torture of like seeing people that you know are immensely talented getting cut that was really really hard to see and so like yeah you're kind of sitting in that waiting room 
I think maybe that's why everybody partially why my guess is why so many people just chose to be chatty or whatever is because it's like you, you have to kind of do whatever you can do to kind of cope with the emotional psychological stress of the situation uh, you know I'm not trying to make it sound like it was torturous but it was it was hard it was really really hard and really fun and we had snacks and whatnot but definitely um there's like psychological warfare happening there with yourself you know what I mean <laughs> so yeah one thing that I think would be really interesting for them to show, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, I think, is the moment that they don't film when you're outside of the door waiting to walk mm -hmm. in to see the judges. Mm -hmm. Because that's when you're really having that moment with yourself where, I mean, I'm sure it's nice to not have cameras in your face, but at the same time, this is when it's like, we have to oh. like compose ourselves now. This is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary. What you don't know is there's actually, I don't know if I'm allowed to like reveal the secrets, but there's like this room, this waiting room where they put like, the next four or three or four people who are auditioning and you're just sitting there and there just so happens to be a couple producer screens around and you can see people on camera as they're in the room being filmed like singing for the judges and it was I mean like I'm even getting a little shaky thinking about it it was so scary and my mom was there thank goodness my mom is such a soothing presence so she was just like calming me down and I was just chugging water and um yeah it was it was scary but it was you know it's it's also exhilarating you're excited and you're you know I think like you're conv I was convincing myself to have a more positive attitude but rather than allowing the nerves to get to me because it is it can be pretty frightening you know what I mean do you remember who you were with in the waiting room um who was it uh I know I know Danny went immediately before me and then I wish I remembered her name there was this girl that was there she was Oh, Maisie or Maylee? I think maybe Maylee was her name. Oh, but I she... just interviewed Maylee Aspen, I think. Yeah, something like that. She was, uh, so she was, I think, in the room with me. Um, and she was just cool, calm, and collected. And I was like, you know, wired. <laughs> so <laughs> um, people definitely cope with the stress a little differently than others. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah. Well, I want to hear about what happened when you walked in the room. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure... We'll never know for all the people that did air, like what was cut, right. what was shown versus not shown. Right. And I'm sure that there's some stuff that we didn't even see from your time mm. in the audition room. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. I, all I remember is once I was walking into the room, I like was kind of like wiggling. And that's when Luke, Luke said like, oh, we're doing a dance or something like that. And that was literally me just trying to like get the jitters <laughs> out, you know what I mean? Prior to walking in. And then I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I it kind of I kind of just blacked out it was so it was so intense but a fun of the a funny a funny little thing in the room is like once you hit your mark you don't realize the room is perfectly silent like it is like the most insulated weird almost like you feel pressure on your ears it's so quiet and then you start talking to the judges um and it's funny it's like I don't know how or why they do this. It must be something for the audio quality, but like you're hearing the judges from the right side only, even though they're right in front of you. It's like, there's a speaker where you're hearing them from. So it's like really disorienting. Everything is really white. There's, you know, cameras all around you, you know, a mic above you. So it's like, it's a lot more visual stimulus than you'd expect it to be. And like when you see it on TV. And uh, I think I, I remember saying this then, I don't think it was on the TV cut. But it was so weird sitting there because you're seeing what you've seen on every episode of American Idol since you were, you know, however young, but you're in it now and you have yeah. to actually interact with them. You know what I mean? Um, but from what I remember, I think I just stepped into the room and uh, as it was portrayed on TV, I just kind of started talking. And it was a lot more back and forth, I think, for uh, than what was portrayed on TV. But right. um, yeah, they were really, really fun and really, really sweet. Uh, and we just, yeah, we had a lot of really fun conversation, but it was, it was, too, I, I've had so many people ask me, like, were you offended or bothered when Katie said Thomas off? And I was like, no, not at all, because we had been talking for, I had been talking for way too long, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was, it was really funny. And, uh, no, that didn't bother me at all. But, um, what was I going to say? Uh, they, uh, I think most of the auditions are about 10 minutes and I think I was in there for like close to 25 so if that gives people any perspective about, first of all, how much is cut, and second of all, how chatty a person I really can be when I'm nervous, um, both of those things are true. <laughs> so, yeah. But then uh, I'm trying to remember, in the TV cut, they only showed a portion of the Chain of Fools. It's funny, they, there is kind of some TV magic going on there, because I actually made it all the way through Chain of Fools the first time I sang it. And then I sang it in a key that I was more comfortable with. And then they immediately afterwards changed the key and started again. And so I was like trying on the spots, like hear it. But I was, I had, I, I had been having trouble finding my starting note 
based off just the piano instrumental. And so um, that's kind of when I had that like horrible flop moment, but I was just like, screw it, like, just have fun. Don't, you know, don't kill yourself over this. This is an incredible opportunity. Um, but they kind of showed that little cut of me really crapping the bed. Um, so that was why I was so relieved when they river because I love that song and it means a lot to me. And so I was like, in that moment, I, I just remember I closed my eyes and I just like took a big deep breath. And I was like, no, you have to, you have to sing this song. Well, you know what I mean? Um, but it went, it went pretty well. So they let you sing before you even got to river. They let you sing the same song multiple times to kind of get your key right. Or I guess they stopped you at <laughs> certain points to say like, get your key right. Or how did that exactly um, go down? I, I, sorry. So I, I, I had sung it in the key that I had rehearsed it and I sang it all the way through and it wasn't bad, but it was a little shaky at parts. Um, but then afterwards, Katie was like, I, Katie mentioned, she was like, I think you, I think you should bump the key a bit. I can't remember if she put it up or down. But we, they, she had, but she had told the pianist, you know, to change the key, and then immediately he started playing. So it's kind of like you immediately had to jump right back in, and uh, so that was. I think that's kind of why I totally botched it. I mean, I also probably botched it because I was horrified and terrified to be in that room. <laughs> but, uh, but um, so yeah, there's uh, there's things like that. I think I, I talked to a few other contestants who had similar things happen where they're like, oh, they wanted me to change the key, and it kind of threw me for a loop, that sort of thing. So yeah. yeah. They definitely want to test you. I feel like they don't even right. also they don't even also show that. Like I think the judges genuinely are curious mm -hmm. about your abilities, and sometimes that doesn't even air probably for time. But they're really kind of coaching you and walking you through what it would be like to have to be an artist or be in this competition right. and to go through the motions. I mean, you know, I'm sure that mm -hmm. it's the kind of stuff that vocal coaches would be working with you on if you make it oh, to right. live shows. Like try it in this key. Right. Pop it up a half step, you know? Yeah, I think I, I think you're probably exactly right. I think it really is probably a, a little bit of a test to like see if you can kind of like change, you know, you know, at the drop of a hat. Um, but yeah, it was a fascinating experience. I, I The whole part about when my mom came in, I don't remember how or why she came in the room. I think like they were asking me about Irish dancing and then suddenly my mom was in the room and then I was like, oh, I guess we're doing this. But that was so funny because I like, I, I had t texted my friends because I had, you know, been talking to the producers about my Irish heritage and the fact that I did Irish step growing up. Um, but uh, I haven't done Irish step dancing in like well over a decade. So like, I have forgotten the vast majority of what I ever once knew. And so that was that was so goofy. My mom is my mom somehow still remembers everything, but I did not remember enough to actually Irish step dance well on that show. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Was fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that go that all goes back to kind of how it's all can be a blur. You're like one moment mm -hmm. you're just standing there yourself, and then your mom's in the room, and you're kind of like, right. "How did that happen?" Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was nice to have her in the room while I was singing, though, because I had rehearsed with her a few times, and she obviously did a lot of performing, um, you know, when she was younger. So she has she had a lot of valuable insight. So it was really comforting to have her in the room with me. I wish yeah. everybody got to have their mom in the room with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Which judge is your favorite, just based on some of the critiques you got throughout the competition? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. I don't know if I could. I guess I would probably pick Lionel Richie. He really is as nice as everyone says he is. He's just a really friendly, warm person. Um, and I yeah, I just like I really valued the way uh, that he it seemed to look at he, when you watch the show. How do I word this when you're watching the show? I feel like with Lionel, you can really see that he is invested emotionally in the person in front of him. And I don't think that's, I'm not saying that that's untrue for the other two, but Lionel just has this energy about him that I find to be really, really welcoming. And it, there seems to be a genuine care there and like a jet, like a super personal sort of investment in the, in how someone else will, or how the contestant will perform. Then I really did feel that when I was in the room and like, even after when they were judging me and I felt like I was on the brink of getting a no from him. Um, I, I, I felt like he at least understood the type of person that I was. Obviously he can't understand the intricacies of every single contestant, but I felt like he, um, he just strikes me as a really empathetic person in that he can, you know, look at someone and he seems to be a pretty good judge of people and is, and, you know, navigates that in a really graceful sort of way. I don't know. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I think he has that ability to look at somebody even when you know that he's judging hundreds of people and make mm -hmm. you feel like he really is paying attention to you the individual right yeah exactly exactly and he like wants to know even though it's only a short period of time he wants to know how you or who you are and how you're doing and he wants to hear your story and 
I mean, you can see that. I mean, I, you can see that in so many different auditions. And like, even, it was so funny when he made that comment about the, like the class clown, like he was like, the class clown is sitting behind this desk. And I was like, yeah, that's true. I, I have often been the person who's maybe been written off because of their like happy go lucky sort of disposition or like not taken seriously. Um, and it was, I, I, I really appreciated that he had that insight and that he was willing to say it, you know what I mean? Cause it, I felt, I didn't want to be written off just because I, I'm a really high energy person. He clearly didn't, you know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about maybe some of the critiques because again, mm -hmm. I'm sure that this is always the part that they definitely have to edit down because they do mm -hmm. probably go pretty in depth and then tell about what are the most important bits to show on TV. Right. But for you, I mean, I don't know if you if, if it was like a blur in that moment or if you really did kind of sink your teeth into all the things they were saying, but mm -hmm. I'm curious what you remember. Uh, I, I don't know that I remember too much more of what they said. Um, Honestly, yeah. I, honestly, to be to be fully frank, I I, have no, I don't really remember that much. But I do I do remember vividly thinking I didn't get it. I didn't get the golden ticket. And I do remember when Katie launched into that. Really, when Katie said, "I whole I wholeheartedly disagree with my fellow judges," I was like, I was like, "Oh my gosh, do I have a chance?" So like the whole emotional, you know, storyline of that moment was very real like I fully thought I was going to get a no from Lionel after Luke gave me the no um but then he gave me the yes and it was awesome yeah, yeah. so when you get two yeses instead of three mm -hmm. in the moment are you just happy to get the ticket and you don't really think about it or are you in that sort of competitive mode of like now mm -hmm. I got to impress that one judge who said no to me that's a really good question. I think there was kind of a sense of, uh, there was kind of a weird like, little bittersweet tension. There was like, I'm obviously really over the moon and grateful that I just got this ticket, but like, I would have loved three, you know what I mean? And, and uh, no, I, I don't, no, definitely not necessarily that I need to impress that particular judge, but more just, it's like, I think um, just a reminder to keep trying to bring your best to the table. You know what I mean? Um, that was, it was more just a reminder in that sense. Uh, no, I didn't feel like particularly bothered by the fact that I didn't get all three. I mean, frankly, what I had, I was, I was surprised to get onto the show. It was 0% expecting, not 0% expecting, but I was like, not going to be shocked if I didn't get a golden ticket, given the level of talent of the people that are making it to that, even to that audition, not even Hollywood week. You know what I mean? Um, so like to get the golden ticket to me, was like, I felt like I won the show. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I can't ask for anything else. You know what I mean? So a hundred percent, a positive, like a feelings of positivity. I, I remember just being like, shit, I really just did that. Sorry. Am I allowed to cuss? I keep cussing. Yeah. Um, okay. But that was that was kind of the overwhelming feeling was just like, oh, my gosh, I really did it. And then honestly, not to be corny, but I was really proud of myself because, I'm you know, I was like, I'm a, like I said on the show, like I'm just a working professional, like a young working professional in Colorado. And I like gave this thing a shot and then like actually kind of doing the thing. It was really like it was a really um, it's like a kind of a moment of w when you inspire yourself. You know what I mean? And it was it felt great. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's it's an accomplishment just to be there. And I right. feel like from what you told me about your sort of emotional roller coaster of an audition, mm -hmm. you sort of felt like what it may have been if you hadn't gotten two mm. yeses. You were, you were questioning whether or not you would get through. So you kind of had that moment of like, oh no. And then right with that, it's like, I really want this. And then when you get right. it, you're like, yeah, like, you know, I, I did put in some effort here. I mean, yeah, I'm just a working professional in Denver, but like, right. I worked hard to be here and honestly it doesn't matter if you've had years of experience in the industry or if you just kind of plopped into it because as long as you put the work in and you show up and you care and you do the best that you can mm -hmm. I think that's all that matters. Yeah, I think that's 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 exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, couldn't have put it better myself. Nothing <laughs> to add to that. <laughs> um well, they do have you filming like post audition interviews, right? So now you got to actually put your thoughts into words. And I'm sure with all yeah. those emotions, it's like, what am I supposed to say? Like, what do you want me to do? Like, they're still filming you. You want right. all kinds of reactions after you already got the ticket. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to stay high energy after that. I mean, to say that my any any drop of adrenaline that I had 
leaving that like like going into that room like I was I was so <laughs> unbelievably tired that night like unbelievably tired that night um but yeah you have to do a bunch of interviews immediately after what was funny was they actually I had like not been put into the schedule for this one type of interview that you need to do before you go in um it's like the one where it said like for a moment like this in the background if you remember um and I actually had to film mine after my audition and pretend like I had hadn't done my audition yet and so like the producer who was filming me she was like come on bring the energy bring the energy I was like my energy is gone like I have nothing left to give you know what I mean? um but it was fun it, it, it is really fun once you have the golden ticket there's just like this immense release of tension it's just like okay I'm good I can breathe again you know what I mean so one of the things that I love yeah. about the show and particularly with the audition rounds and getting the golden ticket is mm. that moment like, you know, you're filming a TV show and with reality TV, a lot of times you wonder, okay, well, how much of it is real? And like, how much mm -hmm. of this person's reaction is real? But, you know, that ticket actually represents like a genuine step forward in your life. It genuinely mm -hmm. changes your life, even if it's just like right. moving one more round forward or winning the whole competition or just the sense of pride that you feel for right. getting it. I feel like, you know, for years you watch the show and it's like the same thing. It's that, that same formula where, you know, when somebody gets this ticket, they're going to be really happy. They're going to be right. jumping, jumping up and down, hugging somebody and right. you know, it's reality and it's, it's like mm -hmm. meant to be feel good, but it's so genuine. I don't know how you could possibly fabricate what it feels like to get that ticket, you know? Right. No, it's true. It's true. And like, I think honestly, not to, not to put a damper on what you just said, but I think the weight, uh, the weight of what it means to get a ticket was kind of reinforced when you see people not get one and like seeing the, the, like how, in how much emotional turmoil it brings for some people where it's like, for some people that they, you know, the, especially for those who, you know, music really is their entire life. It's like that, was a, a, a massive loss for them you know what I mean and it, it's really gutting and hard to see it's really hard to see I think that was um you know the entire experience was a, without question a net positive but if there was any moment of like that was really like sobering and somber it was that it was seeing the people who were like immense first of all immensely talented second of all like in you know hugely invested in music to not for this to not be the avenue um, toward their success, especially when they clearly were obviously hopeful that it would be, it was really, really tough to see. And then on the flip side, on a more joyful, joyful note, when you see people coming out of the room screaming and beaming and sobbing of joy, you know, with tears of joy, it's like that was equally beautiful. Equal, sorry, not equally beautiful because obviously it's not beautiful to see somebody not get a ticket, but um, it was beautiful to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, what a what a roller coaster! That it yeah. was a roller coaster. Well, you acknowledge the reality of the situation, which is that mm -hmm. it's not easy for all. And I think if I could add on to that, what really probably honestly kind of sucks to witness is when you're there filming Hollywood mm -hmm. Week and they have the two different sides of the theater where they're filming the people who just got told you're going to the next round and the people who just got told you're going home. And you're like, oh, okay. right, that setup where you're in the same room outside of the mm -hmm. theater and you've got interviewees with cameras in this corner and there's like the there's different aisles that you walk down. If you get a yes, you go down this mm -hmm. aisle. No. Talk about wait, wait, that. Is, that. is that in Hollywood week? I think, right? Because, well, you, mm. remind me which round you made it through. I only made it to genre. So, right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that might have happened after. But yeah, after I you, I don't they have like two separate aisles where once you get a yes or a no, there's like a yes oh, aisle yeah, and a no yeah. aisle. And then yeah, some people that, get those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> yeah, Hollywood week was a totally different conversation, but, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, again, like just seeing some people, like their dreams are coming true. Like Fritz, I don't know if you, you obviously remember Fritz, he made it really far. Fritz, after me, I remember because the, the last time, day I was there, obviously, was the genre round. And seeing him just sob, he was sobbing, tears of joy, because he was over the moon. Like, and it was so, like, it was just so inspiring me to, for me to see someone, you know, his story was cool. I think he was like a security guard prior to Idol and like, seeing that emotional investment and how over over the moon he was that he made it through it just like that was so you know rewarding to see it was just yeah it was that was so so fascinating and beautiful to see but um yeah equally equally terrible to see this people who have the same investment in music not make it through so mm -hmm. yeah 
isn't it crazy that as a viewer you watch somebody and you know them and you know them from a show and mm -hmm. they're like a celebrity to you and genuinely you could rewind less than a year ago and like fritz right. he genuinely was sitting at a security desk and that was right. the state of his life and people right. didn't know who he was yet and then all of a sudden millions of people know who he is and he's yeah. on stage you know yeah yeah so it's so bizarre to see just arriving at hollywood week i mean i don't know if there's overstimulation there too because it's a bigger venue with like mm -hmm. three times the amount of people let alone new people mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how do you feel in that environment i i don't mean to sound corny but for me getting the golden ticket was such a win that i was like i felt so much more peaceful and calm going through hollywood week than i did um than I did the original audition, like without question. So um, that's definitely true. But I think at that point, it's like all of the people that you're talking to, it's like if, if there was a concentration of talent in the first round, now it's way more concentrated. And literally the people sitting on either side of you are like over the moon talented. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of a, it's it is kind of wild, it's wild. Yeah. And as far as the filming process or even before filming, you know, there yeah. I'm sure you've got Amy with her marching orders. You've got Patrick mm -hmm. who knows how to run the place. And right. you guys are all just listening to whatever they have to say and taking it all in because this really is going to be, I mean, even if you're only there for a couple of days, making it through right. one round, it's going to be a very fast paced, uh, accelerated, insane, intense, but also memorable experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think again, I think for me, um, because like I said, I felt a lot more peaceful and calm going through that part of the process. I felt way more able to like connect with people. So it was like, it was during Hollywood week that I actually became really good friends with Douglas or Elise Cost. You should really talk to Elise. She is the funniest person. And we, we, yeah, we, I'm still in, in touch with Douglas and Elise the most I'd say, but, um, yeah. So I would say during that chapter, you know, you get to, I, I felt way more free to just like enjoy my time there and like talk with people. Cause it was like, um, while it's more, while it's higher stakes, it's like, it's also just like the people who made it through and it's like a really joyful environment to be in. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. so many more people. And and I'm, I'm guessing that some of those feelings of, of maybe being a little more introverted in the audition, mm -hmm. it sounds like obviously like what you just described, would you say that you felt like a little bit of a different person, maybe more on the extroverted side once you were in Hollywood week or? Yeah, again, I think it was more just like just the ability to like relax. Like I got yeah. the golden ticket. That alone is like like I was saying, for me, that was like as as unbelievable as it gets, you know. So um just at being able to feel more calm and to actually interact with people and um actually connect with them in a way that's not like what without like something itching the back of your mind that you're about to have to sing in front of Katy Perry and Lionel Richie for the first time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, because it's like I've done it now, I can do it again. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Yeah. Who was your alumni mentor? Uh, Jordan Sparks. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and I I didn't I didn't get to like sing with her for any or anything, but um, I think because they knew I was such a social person, and it wasn't on the show because I didn't make it far enough. I think for it to be worth it to like include the footage, but they were like miking me up every like twenty minutes to interview different uh, like different contestants and people, and they miked me up to chat with Jordan for a time with uh, somebody who was in my line, who's uh, Alphonse. He was in my line. Um, and uh, so that was awesome. She was like genuinely such a friendly person. I, I like way more friendly than not, not to say I expected her to be unfriendly, but it's like, you're like super famous. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And um, she was honestly one of the sweetest, most charming people I've ever had the pleasure of speaking with. It was such a nice little conversation. Again, kind of like kind of along the same lines of what I was describing Lionel Richie as. I think she kind of had that same quality of like, she was genuinely connecting with people and like genuinely, just so genuine. It was, it was awesome. I got a picture with her. It was sweet. Uh, I think one of the things that she said that stuck with me the most was like, um, you know, at different parts, like we're, you know, you know, you're being told to do different things just cause like it's the camera and it's a scene and you got to like, you know, do the, do whatever. And at one point I, I, I overheard Jordan, like, reach over to the, to one of my fellow contestants and she just said, Hey, just so you know, you don't really, you don't have to do anything that makes you uncomfortable. And I was just like, that is so kind of you to say that because yeah, we are kind of all in this brand new environment and it is stressful. And we are, we are like, you know what I mean? You know, doing things that we've never experienced before. And like, it, I just thought that was really thoughtful of her to like tell somebody that they didn't have to do anything that they felt uncomfortable with. You know what I mean? Just yeah. really cool. Yeah. Well, it's so surreal that, you know, after all these years, I mean, these contestants as early as, I mean, gosh, I think 
the the person who I think was on the show from the earliest point, Ruben Studdard was there. He was on in 2003. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. You know, and like all the way up until, you know, I think like 2015, 14, whatever. But right. the fact that all these people who were in your position so many years ago, mm-hmm. it's like the show mm-hmm. is still kind of the same in a way. I mean, the judges right. are different. It's on a different network, but they've been through the same thing. And the show has been so much of the same thing that it's like you can genuinely believe that they know what they're talking about because even though it might have been a different time, different judges, whatever, the format was the same. They've been in your shoes. In many cases, I think a lot of the seasons were filmed at the same venue that you guys filmed at. So it's like they oh, really cool. probably know yeah, what it's like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I will say that hotel was so nice. It was so nice. The, the one that they had us in for, it was, it was like the Intercontinental or something in downtown yeah. LA. It was so dope. Oh, man. <laughs> My shower was out of control. I would sit there for like 30 minutes at the end of each day. <laughs> it was awesome. It was yeah. funny hearing Douglas talk about how bougie the hotel was and how yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. was just in, just living it up in there. And, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah, you guys get that star treatment. You really yeah. do. Yeah, it was dope. It was dope. Like, even when I got cut, I, like, still had some Uber Eats gift cards. And I was, like, got myself Panda and Chipotle and a oh, milkshake. Man. I was like, I'm eating good tonight. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> After kind of getting into the zone in terms of having some mentoring and getting to know mm-hmm. some people more, I feel right. like you... you even though you're in an even more competitive setting, it's got to be interesting to, for me to think about like, are you, are you nervous again because now it's back to competition mode or are you more settled in because you're with people that you like and you met Jordan Sparks and all the other fun things? (laughs) Yeah. I'll be honest. I was really trying to ride that wave of calm all the way up to the stage, but (laughs) (laughs) I was crapping my pants right before going up. (laughs) It was so scary like the stage has like all these beautiful dramatic lights and like you're you've been sitting there for hours watching people make it or get cut and you're like oh my gosh and and one thing for me was like seeing people were like I could not believe how talented they were like I like the the one that stands out in my mind was um Delaney I don't know if you've talked yeah. about Delaney oh my gosh so Delaney saying ain't no way by Aretha Franklin first of all Aretha Franklin is like my favorite artist of all time and she sang the hell out of that song. Like, I mean, so me and one of the people in my line, uh, her name's Anna Thompson. Um, she and I were like sitting next to each other, like literally starstruck after Delaney's performance. And as a joke, because she's saying, ain't no way. We're like, ain't no way she's not making it through. And then she got cut. And I literally got up out of my seat and ran to the back of the theater just to pull her aside and be like, I don't know what's going on here. That was the best performance I've ever heard. Like I, I was shocked she got cut. So it's like, it is at that point, it is kind of cutthroat. It is pretty hard, but like, I mean, Delaney, if you're ever watching this, it's still one of my favorite performances of that day. I think she, she posted it on her Instagram too. And I've listened to it like a hundred times. It is seriously out of control. She's yeah. so good. Yeah. I didn't actually know her that well, but I mean, her performance was like out of pocket. It was so good. Um, but yeah, once you're about to go on stage, it's like, I think it, everything kind of went black. It was funny though. When, when I finally got up onto the stage, um, Katie was like, Oh, I remember you. And I was like, Oh really? And she was <laughs> like, yeah, if I remember correctly, if we don't make you sing in the next 30 seconds, we'll be talking for 20 minutes. And I was <laughs> like, that's that. <laughs> it was super funny. But, um, I sang, uh, forget you by CeeLo Green. I was like, if I'm going to, I'm I, at that point, I was kind of like, I made it to Hollywood week. I'm going to have a good time. And I love that song absolutely love it it's been one of my favorite songs for years uh, um so i sang it and i just i had the i had the time of my life up on that stage like i was just jamming out i was dancing i i wish i had focused on my vocals a little bit more but honestly it was so fun it was so fun i think if i'm correct tell me if i'm wrong i think i've heard this story because you you've been mentioned quite a few times by other contestants did you have the crowd sing the ooh, ooh, oohs I didn't tell them to, but they did. And it was uh. so fun. It was so fun. Like everybody was participating and clapping and um, yeah, they were, they were everybody. I got like multiple DMS from other contestants that they were like, they were like, yours was the best. Most we were like the most fun performance. I loved it. And that was so nice of people. It was like, you know, I, ideally everyone would make it through, but that's not the case. You know what I mean? So um, it was just, yeah, it was really fun to, uh, cause I think a lot of people lean into like way more like voc- vocally technical songs, which I think is probably a strategic decision, but I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to pick a song that I love and I'm going to have a super good time. And I did, you know what I mean? Clearly it wasn't enough, but it was so fun. I don't, I don't know if you had the chance cause I feel like 
they always have to kind of shorten the songs. But mm-hmm. if you did get to the bridge where it's like, why did you ever get yeah. to get to that part when you uh, performed no, it? I, didn't. I think I sang, uh, no, I didn't get to the bridge. I think I sang the first chorus. Uh, it's, it's like you, you only have like a minute and 20 seconds right, max right. thing in that round. So it's like, I think I did chorus verse chorus and that was it. Cause I yeah. feel like the crowd would go crazy. Cause that would really like let you to, yeah. I mean, that would bring out like the musical theater and you'd just be acting right. and like, why? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> why? Yeah, it's true. Honestly, I, I, I would love it if they were able to just send everybody a video of their, of their, of their, the rounds that they got cut in. Cause it was just, it was like, I would just love to see it just cause it was so fun. And I'd love to just keep that in my memory box. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you can't do it for everybody. You know, forget you was one of those songs. And I don't know if I can think of any off the top of my head where, in my opinion, I don't know what you think. The clean version is actually better than the explicit version mm-hmm. because by I changing agree. the word, it sounds better. Two syllables. Yeah. Like it, it yeah. doesn't even sound right with just the one word. Yeah, I agree. And I, yeah, I, I, I just love that song. I mean, I listen to that song still probably on average once every two weeks, at least. I just love that song. If I need to be put in a good mood, that's my song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, absolutely. I, I think of my, my choices for that round were um, Forget You boogie shoes by casey and the sunshine band and then uh I think oh, that was... would have been great boogie shoes that would have been oh. a really fun one too that one would have been really fun too but retro last... for sure oh was... my god yeah and i think the last one was um i think it was saw her standing there by the beatles i think um so i had some good choices but i i ultimately picked forget you yeah it see it's fun. such a good song on its own as the original what's your opinion yeah. on the glee version of forget you if you've listened to it that's uh Gwyneth Paltrow, right? yeah, yeah 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 yeah. it's super catchy i mean I, I haven't listened to it in years but i'm sure it's a banger if it's anything like the original <laughs> yeah 2011 to like 2012 or 13 those are kind of my favorite years of pop music oh sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's fair I mean, yeah, there was just a lot of good, a lot of good, good music coming out, you know, and they're still, you know, I think a lot of those songs are still played in clubs and whatnot nowadays, you know what I mean? My favorite is just like the fast stuff that's like 128 BPM that you can like go on a run to because like 2012 was when like David Guetta and Calvin Harris and all the DJs were having their moment on the radio and and that's like, that's my thing. I get that. I'm more of a, I like, it's so funny. I'm not really into like any, like super clubby pop at all, but like uh, what I didn't know, I didn't actually know this until recently, but like, and and it just figures, but I love Bruno Mars and it turns out Bruno Mars wrote Forget You. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's, I'll do you one better. So CeeLo wrote don't you buy the pussycat dolls oh really now yeah. that's a good song that's a good song too yeah yeah i think i uh i think i have that on a running playlist somewhere maybe <laughs> and bruno yeah. bruno mars also wrote right round by Flo Rida. bruno wrote that yeah no me calling him bruno as if we're best <laughs> friends that's wild though i had uh, that i had no idea yeah he's a talented songwriter obviously yeah i feel like we could talk about different artists all day but i i want to kind of figure out with you like how it felt to sort of go out on a high note because obviously you only made it through that that last round but I mean you got to that point where obviously you felt proud to be there and you made it past the audition get the golden ticket go to Hollywood week amongst all these other talented people and you got them on their feet and you left a mark on people so you know I I think that bittersweet's another word that we can use here because you get eliminated but I'm sure that there's a lot of of good feelings that you still have Oh, oh, totally. A hundred percent. It was funny. It was like, I was like calling my family and texting my friends after having got eliminated. And I was, I was genuinely trying to feel sad or like not trying to feel sad, but I was like, I was like examining how I was feeling. And I was like, I feel happy right now. I feel over the moon. I like, I've had this unbelievable experience. I've met some of the most incredible people I'll probably ever meet in my life. You know what I mean? A wild experience. Um, and I literally, I just felt happy in my hotel room. Maybe it was the fact that I got a ton of Panda Express. I love Panda Express, but I don't know what it was, but I was just like, I honestly just felt super, super blessed and happy. Like, um, like they interview you after you get eliminated and they're like, well, tell us what you're feeling. And I was like, I was smiling. <laughs> I was just like, honestly, I'm feeling pretty good. Like that was so fun, whatever. And they're like, oh, aren't you feeling sad or mad or whatever? And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not feeling any of those things, to be honest, because like, I just, yeah, like I said, I just felt so blessed to have the experience. It was, it was hard for me to feel sad. Obviously it would have been great for it to last, you know, it would have been great to keep working through the rounds, but um, 
it was it was it was just such a beautiful experience I don't know why I would bother to feel sad about it you know what I mean no I mean did you watch the show did you see what was going on with it once it started airing Oh uh, yeah, I, I watched it. I wasn't not watching it every time, but I, I watched uh, I watched like my favorite performers every week. Um, like I uh, I never had the pleasure of meeting him, but I was blown away by Christian. I wish I had met that guy. He I couldn't believe how talented he was. Um, I don't remember what the song was. But it was like some uh, some gospel song that he sang on Mother's Day, and I have watched that performance like five times. I could not believe how like his vocals are so impressive so impressive yeah actually i think i remember christian's mother's day performance he got sent home right after that and that people were outraged which you got sent home after that oh my gosh see that's this now i feel exactly how i felt like when delaney got cut i'm like you're kidding me that was out of control i'm sorry i mean i know everybody at that at that point in the process is unbelievably talented but i mean that's that song i mean i got so many i got chills like 30 times throughout that song couldn't believe it. He's so good. Well, here's the thing. Blessing and a curse, now that they have the coast-to-coast voting, the way it works where you have to vote instantly, that's probably mm-hmm. why because, I mean, you know, that's a subjective opinion. We both thought it was incredible. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's some crazy people that didn't think so. But, like, basically you have, like, a five – or you can vote throughout the whole show, but then once somebody performs, I think he was like even towards the end of the show. So then you only mm-hmm. had like two minutes left to vote and then the uh, eliminations are right then. So you have to take that into account. And it's like, it. what would the competition look like if you could actually do an overnight vote or a, even if you had to wait till the next week, I think I would prefer that. Cause I feel like it would be a little mm-hmm. bit more of an accurate. Right. That's outcome. a good point. That's a good point. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't believe he got cut after that. Holy cow. I didn't even know that. Wow. Whatever. I'd vote. I, I'd vote for Christian any day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd vote for all of them all day, every day, but I, that, that performance in particular really blew me away. Well, you were a part of a season that was extremely memorable for American Idol. I think, you know, just to, I mean, it's, it's just so cool. I think for anybody to be a part of it, like I, I feel like I have the same attitude about like if I were aired or if I weren't aired, I would just be happy to be a part of it. I'm not, you know, I, I'm jealous that I couldn't, I would like, I would pay to like sit there at Hollywood week and just like watch the show because it's like a free, I mean, well, I don't, not for me, but like being in that audience at genre challenge is probably like a free concert, just seeing everybody sing and getting to know everybody and just seeing the camaraderie between you guys. I mean, there was really something magical about what you guys were making. Oh, totally. Totally. Again, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I would, I would be, I would love to be a fly on the wall. It was so funny. Um, like after the, after the show ended, I was like, that was such an incredible experience. And like Lionel was in my original audition was joking that he was like, you would, you should just interview people. And I was just like, I would love to bring me on the show. And I will literally, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think Ryan Seacrest is planning on leaving anytime soon, but if there's a spot, I would totally take it. <laughs> you know what they should do? They, the, back in the day, they used to do on the night of the finale, they would have like live like events at like some mm. the contestants' oh, yeah, local yeah, yeah. things. And contestants would be the people that would interview so um, fun. Yeah. the fans and stuff. So who knows? Yeah. If they ever bring that back, they know who to call. Right, right. Yeah. I have a, it's funny. I have a, I have another, I have a, a friend who's a really, really talented singer. Um, and uh, I, I keep trying to encourage her to audition. If she auditioned, I'm like, maybe I would do it again. Maybe not, but maybe. <laughs> and then maybe that would be my name to become the new interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, would you ever so consider fun. going out for one of these shows again, whether it's Idol or The Voice or anything like that? Um, I don't know. It's been a, it's been an interesting year since Idol. I've just been like trying to grow in other ways because I think like what, what the biggest the biggest takeaway that I had from the entire experience was just like um just do it like if there's something that you want to do just give it a go why the hell wouldn't you you know life is right. so short um and like it all it took for me was like this groggy day in my bedroom when I was like you know what I'm just gonna send it why not I'll give it a go and it worked and it went awesome it was so fun you know what I mean and I you know made the best memories so it's kind of like I don't really know what the next step is for me but um whatever it is I hope I just send it because it was so fun you know what I mean so that's kind of my uh, my biggest takeaway was if it is like if anyone is considering auditioning or feeling on the fence, there's literally no reason not to. Um, yeah. So with that, Thomas, I mean, I would love for you to tell us what else you've been up to the rest of the year and just things that you have planned. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had I wish I had something more inspiring to say, but 
um, like I mentioned, I mean, I, li I live with my friends in a really fun city. So it's kind of just been a year of like, kind of, I think like I maybe have a newfound confidence from the show. I mean, I've never really lacked confidence. I've always been kind of out there, but um, that I think just that since the show, it's, it's been really good. It's just been, you know, a positive, positive year. I'm, I'm working. I've made a few money moves in my career, which have been really awesome. But, you know, I, I think right now I'm kind of in a chapter of trying to evaluate what it is I'm actually meant to do with the rest of my life. Because again, kind of like I was just speaking to um, that American I know it was kind of this thing that was a door that just opened because I just made the decision to try it. So I think something that's been on my mind more recently is like, what other, what other things are just beyond my grasp if I just did one thing to make it to kind of jolt it into motion, you know what I mean? So um, I'm not hundred percent sure what the, what the, what the rest of my life will look like, but I'm certainly glad that American Idol was a blip on it. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think I'll, uh, as far as creative endeavors go, if I, if I ever figure out exactly what I want to do creatively, I'll reach out to and we can do another episode so I can plug myself. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want to know because I feel like the sky's the limit for you and there's so many different things that whether they're creatively or just kind of personally in your life that you're figuring out. Do you have one goal? We're approaching the end of this year. One thing that you want to achieve before the end of 2022? Mm, that's a good question. Um, one thing that I want to achieve before the end of 2022 um i guess oh <laughs> i mean I've, I've honestly achieved most of my my 2022 resolutions already obviously um the american idol thing was a big chapter of that um i don't know i actually don't think i have a good answer for that i'm working on a novel maybe i'll finish that wow <laughs> yeah that that's been but that's been in the works for like over two years and I'm really struggling with the, the conclusion. So we'll see if I can, maybe I can come up with a, with a good, you know, end. Yeah. <laughs> time will tell. I'll yeah. leave with that. If you, have, if you get any good ideas for, uh, for the end of a, of a novel, send them my way. I'm, I'm excited for you to have that light bulb moment of like, I got it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. every time I think I have a light bulb moment, I sit down and try and write it and then I'm like, nah. So one of them just has to stick, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I feel like it's a lot of pressure with novels because like, think mm -hmm. about TV episodes, there's episode one, episode two. And like, if one episode's kind of like not your favorite ending, it's okay. Cause you have another episode, but a book, it's like right. everything has to come together because this is like the one shot to like tie it all right. together. Totally. Totally. And there's nothing worse than reading a series where it's like, there's so many loose ends and I don't want to be that kind of writer so who knows i'll figure it out eventually <laughs> we're both we're both perfectionists we want to create work that people look at and from top to bottom it's like wow you know oh yeah that is without question my biggest struggle as a creative person is like i am wary of i like sometimes we'll just completely not touch a creative project because i'm like if i can't do it to the extent that i'm envisioning for it i'm not going to do it which is stupid because you got to fail you know what i mean you've got to yeah. fail a few times you know what i mean um, maybe I just need to open myself up to more experiences that involve failure so that I get, get more comfortable with it. That's my goal for the end of 22 is that I fail. Maybe I'll intentionally get fired or something. <laughs> <laughs> what a note to leave us on. Well, you know what? It doesn't have to be a bad note because failure can be a good thing. And I think right. that, uh, if people want to go and witness your failure in a good right. way, they can go follow you on social right. media. And I want you to plug your socials that people can check you out and stay tuned for your journey. Right, right. Or if they want to see me fail, just watch that episode where I got cut. <laughs> just, just a reminder. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should just print that print that image out on my wall so I can look at it and be like, yeah, you are a failure, Thomas. <laughs> if you really want to get dark, put it over your golden ticket and put the golden ticket behind it. <laughs> yeah, I only get a look at the golden ticket if I ponder my failure for 10 minutes every morning. That's, that seems like a good philosophy. Or you need something to wipe your tears on so you just take the ticket and it's like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. My golden ticket in particular has a bunch of bite marks on it because I just like was like compulsively biting. Oh my I don't goodness. Know why. So my golden ticket has bites all over it. <laughs> now we know it's yours. You could, if, you what know, is... when that novel hits it big and people know Thomas Patrick Moran, yeah. you can sell the ticket on eBay because that's something that they can have yeah. with, yours, <laughs> with his bite marks. With my tears and bite marks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see well that would be awesome if that golden ticket were yeah connected to a killer artist that would be awesome that would totally be awesome. or a writer right cool or both well, do you have any other questions for me both. um well you know i think if there's one word to sum up your american idol experience i would love to hear it 
Hmm. Oh, crud. That's hard. One word. Um, I guess I would just say um, impactful. That feels broad enough. Impactful. And now let me explain my one word. Impactful in that it's like the eye-opening experience for what we're capable as human beings of doing if we just choose to try and do something. Impactful in that it kind of gave me insights into myself and how I behave in situ and like in, in how I handle myself and what how different stimulus affects me. Impactful in that I've met people that have absolutely blown me away. And like I've had the pleasure of meeting artists who are, you know, objectively going to change the world in their lifetimes. I mean, impactful in the fact that I, yeah, just made some of the best memories I've ever had, you know? So um, I guess my word would be impactful. That's Hopefully a great word. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's true for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you even, I remember you said earlier in the conversation that winning, getting that ticket kind of felt like you won. And, you know, that is, that makes an impact on you. So. Right. Oh yeah. No brainer. That was, I, I, I feel like I, a hell of a winner for having that golden ticket. And if I ever have the pleasure of having kids, I cannot wait to rub that in their face if they're, you know, 25 and haven't done anything called like, I got this when I was 25. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, hopefully American Idol is still running and they'll be like, or if it's not, they'll just be like, what the hell are you talking about, Dad? Well, no, who knows? <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. If it's still running, Ryan Seacrest is going to be still hosting that show no matter how much right. hair dye he's using or not using, if yeah. he's embracing the gray hair, whatever. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it is pretty impressive how they, I mean, he really looks pretty similar to how he looked on season one. I'm like, I don't know what kind of voodoo you're using, but it's working. Yeah. He's got the whole skincare and the, you yeah. know, whatever they do in LA. Right, right, right. I wonder how old he was when he started. Maybe he's around our age. Maybe we have a shot at becoming interviewers. He was, he was 25, I think. Really? Oh, crap. I'm like four days behind. My birthday was just last week. Dang it. It's I never too I late, though. I believe it's never too late. That's true. I actually saw this really inspiring article about like, really impactful people who have, uh, who like started really late in life. So it's true. It's never too late. And to tell your dad. Yeah. I heard, uh, heard about a 50 year old who decided to go to med school. So that's so cool. That's so inspiring. I hope they, I hope they kill it, but not their patients. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> let's, let's. <laughs> <laughs> oh god this is fun oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> oh man but yeah 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 yeah. so impactful that's my word um but uh yeah I, I i've seen on the end of some of those episodes some of your other episodes that people uh like plug their own songs but i have a few friends of mine who have songs out that i can plug if you want me to do that sure go for it Okay, Elise Costco. She has a song called Brian. It's super good. You should go listen to it. I literally wrote a list because I was oh like, my goodness. I want to plug look at the people. prep. These are these are the coolest people I've ever met. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this podcast. I'm gonna make sure they get some they get some views from it. Anna Thompson. She was in my line in Hollywood Week. She just came out with this song called Cadaver, Cadaver Heart. Cadaver Heart. Yeah, bang is a mm -hmm. banger. I literally have, like was running to it the other day. And then Ray Christopher, he and I weren't super close or anything, but he has this song called Be There. Have you spoken with Ray by chance? I have. Okay, so you should listen to his song Be There is really good. It's really good. I mean, gosh, I'm sure I'm sure most of the people there have, have music out that's really good. So just go listen to everybody. That's my advice. <laughs> well, you know, this may be a perfect time to mention our American Idol on Air playlist on Spotify. Thomas, I don't know if you heard about this, Ooh. but... Recently, I was like, we need one place to kind of put all the music from our American Idol on your guests. And even though some of those names are not people that we've had on the podcast, I'm going to add all those songs that you mentioned because there is a link in our bio. There's that link tree where you can access all of our episodes on Spotify or Apple, wherever. But the American Idol on your Spotify playlist, as I said, is one place where you can find music from all of our guests. And so if you click that link, you can hit shuffle or you can start from the beginning and uh you can always stay in the loop so that you can keep in touch with guests that we had in the past. And I'll always be adding songs from all of our upcoming guests. So check that out. I'm definitely going to add those songs. And uh, Thomas, if you ever release anything, it'll be on the playlist. Cool. That sounds good. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Everybody should go check that out. That's really cool that you're doing that. That's really cool. And thanks for this platform. It's really cool that you're invested enough to give people a chance to share their experience, even if they weren't aired. It's really, really cool of you. So rock on. Hey, man, I love it. It's been a blast. And hey, one more time, the socials. I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but I would love for you to leave us with the socials. People can oh, follow God. you, keep in touch with you. Um, what is my Instagram? I, I, I took it off my phone because I was spending too much time on it. It's, I think, Thomas 
dot Patrick dot Moran, I think for everything. So <laughs> I'll take your word for it and I'll check. And if it's okay. something different, I'll type it or I'll put a little screen okay. thingy that okay, shows cool. the, but that uh, sounds awesome. I, I feel like maybe at some point I should do the same. I like that taking it off of your phone for a little bit. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, cool. The other day I was like, okay, Thomas, you are, you are burning your time. So it's, it's great. A great, great platform, but it's good to take breaks. <laughs> Dude, it's kind of scary. Like how kind of sometimes I find myself automatically when I'm not even trying, like, I just have my phone and I have this compulsive, like my, my fingers, like Instagram, TikTok. I know. Oh, I know. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. I'm like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I, my brain didn't actively decide to spend time on social media. My fingers just go to the apps. I'm like, this is yeah, not good. <laughs> it's true. It's like, it is like a weird sort of like psycho, like pseudo psychological addiction. It's so weird. It's, I feel the same way and not having it on my phone where it used to be like the number of times I've opened my phone and gone for it and it's not there. It's like, it is so disturbing because you notice it because you can't click it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give it a go. Maybe we need to start a movement where, like, we need to get people addicted to, like, Angry Birds again. Or, like, Flappy Bird. Right. Like, the game. Flappy Bird. Where did Flappy Bird ever go? I hate that they took that down. That sucks. That was so fun. Well, was I didn't, so why fun. did they even take it down? I don't even... Was it because people were spending too much time on it? I think so. I think if I remember correctly, I think the, I think the creator literally was like, this is a, a pandemic. Like, it, it's becoming an addiction. The pandemic the before world. the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, he didn't know what that word meant yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, it was uh, it, that game was horribly addicting. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we'll get some slightly less addicting games to kind of take over the social yeah. media and then have a balance so that you actually live your life and then in yeah. moderation use your phone. Right. Well, I just play trivia games because I'm like, at least I'm enriching my mind, even though I'm playing a game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or uh duolingo but that owl is pretty haunting when it pops up everywhere he's like you haven't been on duolingo in three days and i'm gonna kill you you know what i mean like, i don't like that but i do like trivia <laughs> oh man so. well if there is one social media account besides thomas's i want you to follow it is at idle on air podcast instagram tiktok you know where to go also make sure that you subscribe on apple podcast or spotify wherever you may be listening or if you're watching on youtube you'll see that subscribe button there too so guys thank you so much for listening or watching and thomas Thank you, my friend, for being an aired exception on American Idol Unaired. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.